In an article touching back into 1865, where this is pre, or this is in relation to uh, the Civil War that had taken place in the United States, and touching on why the Civil War took place, why why it was necessary, and equally as important, how Black Americans at that time uh, refused to enter into the banking system, and how over years of socialism, how they fell behind into poverty. And so in 1865, uh, President Abraham Lincoln had enacted what is called the Free Man's Bank Act, and he authorized the authorization of the National Bank for recently emancipated black Americans. And so at a time period where this individual, Abraham Lincoln, was supposedly fighting for slavery, even though slavery still existed in the northern states. And so during this time period where the South was not being represented, so you had the North, which what which is what gave rise to the federal government that exists today in the United States, and how the states ended up losing all of their power. And so even though the colonies had won the war, the war was not over in terms of history. Because Europe, especially in the UK, were they people were socialists, and so another war came about, which is what the Civil War was about, bringing these individuals back into the fold. The America that the founding fathers had wanted to create, that was more reliant at a time period on gold and silver, allowing for the United States or the colonies that existed at that time to kind of operate independently like countries and of course according to, but would rely on the constitution as basically their backing right what their the blueprint for the country for these individuals and how they were going to free themselves overwhelmingly a lot of this was related to socialism that was already existing within Europe and black Americans that were supposedly freed were really just individuals that were being brought into the fold uh, where slavery was not producing what they had wanted moving forward. So they really didn't want responsibility for these individuals. Uh, what they wanted to do was they wanted them to give them the freedom to choose and in essence what they wanted to do in terms of work, but they needed to just control the currency. And so looking back, we'll see what was the result of many of these black Americans during what is called the reconstruction. So there's the reconstruction is during periods of post, you know, post civil war. So this, this, this is from the Chicago reporter investigating race and poverty since 1972. And so this bank uh, brought in roughly about $3 million and existed in about 34 branches within the United States. Overwhelmingly, the people who were taking part um, in this bank were, and this is from the federal government, uh, were freed, freed men, overwhelmingly black soldiers. This is while it is widely known that there are severe disparities in wealth and income between blacks and white Americans. The origin of this is less appreciated. Indeed, before there was a great recession or a great depression, recently emancipated black Americans had their first monies as freed persons mishandled and never returned in full. And so it was a rela in relation to this that caused many black Americans to be, for generations, to be distrustful of the banking system. And so where people were trading commodities and assets for bills, not gold or silver, the system that was being created, many black Americans were left out of as a result of what had happened at this time in the 19 in the 1860s and it says cases of black soldiers uh, being swindled for instance was quite common highlighting the need to establish a formal and central banking institution for newly freed blacks and so this is what the government was doing was trying to find an institutional way for black americans especially black soldiers to have their monies taken care of Following a meeting, uh, they instituted this bank in 1865 for the Free Man's Bank that was pushed forth th through Congress. And so, as they had stated, that the Negro soldiers should deposit their bounty monies 
with them. And this was as a relation to uh, General Oliver Howard, who was the commissioner of the Free Men's Bureau. Excuse me. As he goes on to state, um, I consider the Freedmen's Bank to be greatly needed by the colored people and have welcomed it as an auxiliary to the Freedmen's Bureau. And of course, many black, uh, many black Americans um, had put their money there. It went on to state that the, the banking system grew in places like New York, Atlanta, Memphis, uh, Philadelphia, and Washington, D.C. And all of those places today are predominantly black cities, right? Where, where, or where you have a large amount of congregation of black Americans. It says, go in any afternoon in an office to be found full of Negroes depositing little sums of money, drawing little sums, or remitting to a distant part of the country where they have relatives to support or debts to discharge. And so what happened uh, during this time period where you had a lot of black Americans that were depositing their money was where did that money go? And so we'll, we'll, we'll see that here. By 1871, Congress had authorized the banks to provide mortgages and business loans. Such mortgages and loans, however, were usually given to whites, creating a financial paradox. A bank using the savings and income of black depositors to advance the economic fortunes of whites who had their disproportional mainstream banks that excluded blacks. And so this was how to bring socialism to the black community because many of them were working and had their physical money in hand this is why a lot of people back in the day they would you know stuff their their stuff their stockings or they would stuff their mattress or they would hide money in jars or they would bury stuff in the ground because they 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 didn't have one they didn't have access to these banks to mortgages and loans etc and they would in essence um expand the monetary system uh, by just printing more money at this time period they were no longer using gold and silver they were using what was called greenbacks now the southern nation the southern states when they had seceded from the union also themselves had their own um, currency that they created and those were called graybacks and uh, bluebacks and it said here uh, this is from gettysburg college after the southern states seceded they created their own currency and of course the northern states were using greenbacks and so the inflation that the northern countries were creating for themselves like i said as margaret thatcher had stated that you eventually run out of other people's money and you have to extend this ponzi scheme to more and more people because what you end up with is more and more inflation and so the result for many black americans was that they had their monies in essence stolen from them the resulting mark was b i think it was somewhere down here um by the 1900s only 1.6 million right at the beginning it was somewhere 3 million a little over 3 million where in today's current dollars would be the equivalent when this article was written uh, about 43 million almost 44 million or only 62 percent of total amounts of deposits prior to the bank's failure and had been paid. Deposits worth nearly $22 million in today's dollars were largely lost. In the end, most black depositors lost their savings, uh, receiving little to no money back from the bank of the federal government. And so this is why, for many generations, many black Americans were not able to and willing to get into the system because they realized at the end of the day that it was just a scam a lot of black americans realized that the system that was being put in place was just a scam to steal people's money and overwhelmingly at that time most people who were benefiting from black labor and the savings of black americans were white people as you can see from the article that i had discussed it says black wealth issues are not a new problem rather they are historically rooted in persistent patterns of loss and mistreatment Beginning with the mishandling of the free men, freed men's and freed women's money during the Reconstruction. This is part of a promise of Black History Month um, as it provides an opportunity to shine light on not only the success of Black Americans, but also the roots of persistent patterns of unequal and, of course, unfair treatment. And so for many Black Americans at this time period, uh, 
you know, as history would go by and they would create new banks, black Americans didn't want to participate. And so America at that time extended over into Europe and to many other nations. And so this is what you saw like during the early 1900s. Um, I forget what the generation is called. I don't think they're called the con the conservatist generation, but the generation that came before the baby boomers. And this is why the baby boomers and the generation before them had a big boom in the economy because many of them were able to receive printed money from other individuals who were either being taken advantage of in this banking in this banking scheme that was being done by both the federal government as you can see that who was involved in this in this as well as other commercial banks who are, are just extensions of the government and overwhelmingly this is related to socialism right because the premise of socialism is to redistribute other people's wealth this is the permit that you don't own your labor and of course the, the one one of the easiest ways that many of these uh governments were able to do this or peoples was through the banking through the banking system where they could take your hard hard currency your currency that you own and then of course lend out more of it than actually exists and so they lend it out to their friends, they lend it out to their family, they lend it out to people who are accredited investors, right? And then you take the loss in the inflation. So they would go out, buy assets, as the article had discussed, where they were buying assets, buying homes, uh, starting businesses with the monies that was given to them or that they, that they labored for, right? They had proof of work for their labor, and then they would increase the monetary system. They would increase the monetary system which is basically just counterfeiting the currency legally. They would legally counterfeit the currency, go out and buy hard assets, homes, start businesses, um, you know, buy equipment that was needed, and then exclude blacks from being able to enter into taking out loans, etc., via racism or what have you, right? Because at the end of the day, the reason being is because only so many people can come out on top on the Ponzi scheme of currency, right? And this is just forms of socialism that the, at the end of the day, the, the, the purpose is to redistribute wealth to yourself. And so you, they do that via taxation. This is kind of what you see going on today um, where they talk about in New York. I think this was a recent... Uh, this was a recent video done by uh, Cash Jordan, where it says here, uh, I don't think you can see me here. Let me move, remove myself, right? New York City says New York City is banning cars unless you pay $23 a day. And of course, this is done under the guise of uh, congestion, right? There's too much, too much congestion in the city. And they know these people are going to come to the city. Overwhelmingly, it's businessmen. But in socialism, you need to find ways... Uh, to redistribute other people's labor that is t that is in dollars or in wealth right and then you need to find a way how do i how do i recoup that right and you do that by imposing a ban or a tax right and then this is what you this is what you end up with and of course the uk is dealing with this uh the exact same way when it comes to and i talked about this in previous videos where whether it's a climate change narrative overwhelmingly backing for strong climate action uk study for instance so what are they going to do they're going to tax people who want to fly they're going to tax people who want to drive in, you know in the cities and of course the people in the suburbs were like well at least we're not going to get hit and they were like hey we got all those people that live in the suburbs so why can't we go ahead and extend that tax to them right we can extend the taxes as a pollution tax on older cars right because you have an old car you're not participating in buying new cars you understand the new car is just a scam especially because it loses so much of its value very quickly and so many of these people are like we ain't gonna get a new car i ain't trying to live in the city but from their perspective they're like how are we able to steer steer steal their wealth as well and so what you do is, is you impose more of these pollution taxes climate taxes all right and a lot of this is related to meat fruits and vegetables they're like hey you know this is the stuff that you need you need to be able to travel well we're going to tax you we're going to tax your income we're going to tax you on your purchases oh you want to buy a home we're going to tax that as well uh you're going to have a service you need you need to have 
gas and electric, oh, there's a tax on that as well. And so this is what you end up with in socialism, where it is the, the constant way where the people who run the system need to find a way to redistribute your wealth to themselves. And of course, some of those people do benefit. You have people that are on Social Security, fixed income, Medicare, Medicaid, uh, pensioners, uh, people who are on um, pension programs for like private institutions like Ford. And of course, those get bailed out by the public as well. Because at the end of the day, it's just a Ponzi scheme. At the end of the day, that's all it is, is just one big Ponzi scheme of socialism, which is how do we redistribute your wealth, your labor, that is just represented by the bills that are given to you for the purpose of exchanging goods and services, as opposed to a barter system. And this is what you get. And this goes like the further back I look at it, the further back that I realize, you know, that this system of socialism has been extended for quite some time. And of course, this is why you get wars, because they need to find ways to steal other people's labor, to steal other people's labor, drive them into poverty, um, and force them to work for bills that are just pieces of paper with ink. And now, of course, we don't even go that far anymore. We just like put some digits on the screen. Give me your ha hard asset. Give me your oil. Give me your commodity. Give me your labor. Give me your products. And so people who think that because Americans can go further and further into debt, that this is somehow a negative on their part. And I would say no. When you see that America couldn't create new debt, when you start to see the debt, the deficit have to go down, when Americans didn't have access to credit cards, because all of this are just systems within systems for America and Americans to benefit by devaluing the labor of other people in other countries through wars, through the World Health Organization, for your health, uh, we're going to save the planet sort of concepts. And all this does is pushes people into poverty or finds way to tax them. This is why I showed that article last time about um, how America, I think it was uh, either Janet, Janet Yellen or Hillary Clinton was talking about how we, we need to bank the unbanked. We need to reach out to these people because they don't have access to banking systems. And all that means is we don't have access on how to tax you. We don't have access on how to redistribute some of your labor. You're laboring for a physical asset. Maybe you're laboring for gold or maybe for a real bill in your hand that you can use to then exchange for a good or a service. We don't have access to you to put that money into a system where your name and whatever digit your social security or whatever other countries use is there so we can keep an eye on what you're making and not making and then we can subsequently increase the currency because we know how much you're going to create and then throw that debt on you in the form of inflation. It's been going on for such a long time that most people don't realize that we live under this globalist, this global socialist communist regime. And the further back I look in, in history, a lot of this originated in Europe, a lot of this concept. And I believe it was related to the wars that went on in Prussia in like the 1850s and 60s. And the socialists had won the war. And you look through the history and there's a history of booms and busts where they were just printing money out of thin air through the banking industry. And then eventually it came here because they needed more people. They needed more people. They took over the land here, enslaved the people, created the infrastructure, set those people free, and then brought them into the socialist fold of the banking system where they're able to then subsequently tax them. And of course, that has expanded over time to multiple countries to the point where I think it's like 70 or 75% of the whole world has a central bank. And central banking is one of the most important tenets of socialism. Something very difficult to something very difficult to root out of nations, but at the end of the day, all nations will fall into poverty because all nations will not have children, and there won't be anybody else, right? Like Margaret Thanger had said, Thatcher had said, eventually you run out of other people's money. Anyway, I'm going to leave it here. This was a nice, interesting read that I had taken a look at. 
while I was busy uh, in my car for alternate science this morning, and I came across this article talking about it, and it was interesting to see why many black Americans at that time period in the 1860s wanted nothing to do with the banking system after experiencing the real purpose of it, which was just socialism and how to rob them of their wages. Anyway, I'm going to leave you here. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.